All right, so this is a remake of a video I made a few months back um, where I was listing my top 10 films of 1974. And uh, so since then I discovered a film, or I watched a film and it made it into my top 10. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I just, I, I have to remake this film, re -up, or, sorry, remake this video, re-upload it uh, with my new uh, addition in my top 10. Um, uh, so yeah, I've kind of, sorry if you already watched that video of mine, uh, so, uh, you'll probably be a little bit, uh, most of the things I'll talk about, I, uh, I'm kind of repeating myself, but, uh, from the last video, but anyways, so if you saw my last video, my top, my number 10 for 1974 was, uh, this film here, but now this has been pushed back to my number 11. So I thought I'd just include it anyway. But yeah, I had Young Frankenstein as my 10, but now this is number 11. Um, really cool black and white movie. It looks really, really nice, really good cinematography. It's funny. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to give it a quick shout out since it was my previous number 10. Now this is my official number 10 now. <clears throat> Uh, Black Christmas, really cool uh, slasher film. It was kind of like ahead of its time uh, a little bit. Um, and uh, uh, like these kind of movies can be pretty, most of the time they can be pretty, mm, you know, not very well made or rush together thrown together like you know like d movie kind of kind of like a d movie kind of uh feel but this one's really really well made um really good kills and pretty pretty creepy it's my 10 now my number nine is bad ronald really really cool uh made for tv movie that's gotten like Kind of a cult following over the years. Uh, I checked this one out uh, like a long time ago and uh, yeah it didn't disappoint. It's really it's kind of creepy but it's and it's it is cheesy but it's like super entertaining. Um, you kind of have to get past the fact that it's uh, like you kind of have to go into the movie knowing it's a made-for-tv film. And once you accept that, then, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll find that it's, it's, uh, really entertaining for what it is. And yeah, it has a creepy, creepy story. Now, this is the film that I watched recently that made it into my top 10. So f for my number eight, I have The Conversation. I had wanted to watch it for a while, actually. And then, uh when I finally found it at a thrift store, I realized it was 1974 and I had just done that, uh, just made that video. So I was like, oh shit. I was like, let's see if this is good or maybe it, maybe I'm not gonna like it and it won't, I won't have to remake the video. <laughs> but yeah, it is really good. Um, so it's a Coppola film. Um, but yeah, it's it's really kind of, has a cool, that cool like 70s um, kind of like filming style. Um, really cool ending. I like how it all pieced together. Um, and it's about uh, Gene Hackman overhearing, he's like an audio uh, specialist and he's kind of taped this conversation and he he's, slowly trying to find out what exactly the couple is talking about in the conversation and then it leads to like a conspiracy kind of kind of thing 
but yeah, it's really, really entertaining. Really good movie. And that makes my number seven, uh, The Parallax View. Um, this is a really cool, uh, another kind of conspiracy film um, where uh, everyone starts getting killed off um, because they know something. They're like the government or whoever this these people are trying to keep something secret and they're killing off all these people and he knows that they're going to come for him at some point so um it's kind of him trying to you know just survive and uh there's a really 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 cool sequence in this where uh, it's kind of like a brainwashing sequence and it's just really really well done um super intriguing and yeah, this is a awesome film. Got my number six, <clears throat> Phantom of the Paradise. Um, really fun uh, De Palma film. Really um, unique. Uh, and uh, what else could I say? Like, it's it's kind of a movie of its own. Like you never really seen anything like this before. Um, and yeah, it's just super, super fun. Um, and it's like a musical and it's a really, it's probably one of my favorite musicals actually. Um, uh, it's just, it's just a really awesome movie. Um, and shout out to Jessica Harper, the le uh, one of the lead um, actors in this. Uh, she went, she started her career with this and Suspiria. And so it's just, an amazing um, start to a career um, that she had. Uh, yeah, so if you haven't seen this, definitely go check it out. And number five, which was maybe, um, most people would probably have this higher, uh, The Godfather Part Two. Um, yeah, I really like this movie. Uh, it's, it's really, really, uh, it's one of those sequels that are that's uh, just as amazing as the first film, and um, but I do prefer the Godfather one. I just uh, I love like the um, Pacino in Italy scenes, uh, um, but so overall I do like the Godfather one better, but the Godfather two is still really amazing, and um, yeah, so it has my number five spot. Uh, I really like how it goes back and forth with, with uh, like, where you get to see um, Robert De Niro playing, uh, playing uh, Marlon Brando's character. And then you also get the uh, modern time with Al Pacino. Yeah, really solid movie. My number four is Chinatown. Really cool, cool, stylish, like... Um, like a noir f film, uh, which I like. I like those kind of movies and uh, uh, kind of has like a Vertigo vibe, but obviously it's not as good as Vertigo, but but it's like a really, uh, you know, it's up there. Um, and like also kind of like conspiracy going on. I guess it was kind of popular around that time um, to make like conspiracy films which nowadays like no one would even touch with the 10 foot pole. So I really liked how movies weren't afraid to go into that back then. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, really cool Polanski film. Probably one of his, definitely one of his best. Um, and there were so many good films in 1974 for some reason. Uh, like in other years, this probably would be my, easily be like my number one, but there's uh, a few more here. So my number three is The Castle of Sand. Uh, it's kind of like a more unknown uh, film, but I saw it on TCM uh, maybe six months ago or something. And it was really, really uh, good. Uh, so it's, the best way I can describe this is 
basically it's kind of like a 70s memories of murder <clears throat> except it's uh, Japanese not Korean and um because it's basically about cops trying to solve a solve a case um and but this film is kind of different like it's not so much a mystery but it's just uh it's just really well made and uh one of the characters here is a, a piano player and so there's some really cool uh, piano playing parts um like really good music uh, and it's just a really really well made story <clears throat> and uh has that 70s really uh cool 70s um vibe to the film the number two i have the texas chainsaw massacre uh uh it's just so so perfect as a horror film uh like it's so grimy gritty uh nasty like something you feel like you're watching something that you shouldn't be seeing um it does that so well and just yeah the whole vibe like it's a really perfect piece of art um and it, obviously the end gets really crazy um it's like the first time i was watching it i was like wow this is like intense and um but yeah it shot like really really cool and uh and of course the ending is one of my favorite movie endings of all time. And uh, yeah, so that's my number two. And speaking of uh, favorite movie endings of all time, another, my number one is also one of my favorite movie endings of all time. But anyways, it's uh, The Taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3. Uh, so if you saw my previous video, you already knew what my number one was going to be. But um, this is just a really, really, really well-made uh, action movie. And these are the kind of action movies that I like. Um, I feel like back then they were made, like they're kind of, like they're different than now where they just, wrote movies, uh, action movies now just rely on like, um, like stunt after stunt after stunt or like cgi and no not much story involved and stuff like that um but back then they were made much more like you didn't need a whole lot to happen but yet it was still super super entertaining to watch and on the edge of your seat like trying to f like like waiting to find out what happens but anyway, so these guys uh, uh, take over a subway car and they're holding it hostage, and which is a kind of a, an intriguing story to begin with. And uh, Walter Matthau plays the the guy in charge of, um, I guess, the subway system, kind of like the manager. And so it's just about him kind of dealing with them, and they're like they're in contact with each other and just the way these guys try and pull it off and everything. It's really, really, uh, really a fun movie. I, I had a blast watching this. And uh, the ending is one of my favorite movie endings of all time as well. Uh, and when that, when that happens, it's just kind of like the cherry on top uh, for me. Uh, ending can really, you know, uh, uh, like, uh, really, uh, like seal a movie <clears throat> into your uh, brain <laughs> and uh, anyways yeah so that's my number one um, and yeah so uh, sorry I had to remake this this uh, video but I plan on doing more videos like this where I talk about my top 10 of a certain year and uh, yeah so I'll be back soon with uh, more videos thank you